This is a lecture prepared by Farouk Alemi. Recall the framework for hypothesis testing. First, we examine the assumptions. Then this, we state the hypothesis, calculate the statistics, look up the p-value, and then decide to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. In this set of slides, we apply this framework to comparing two rates taken from independent samples. In our investigations, we first identify a reasonable point estimate. This will be the difference of the rates in the two samples. Here we see the difference of the two rates shown. The hats on top of the probability designates that these are estimated from the sample. We use these estimates to infer the population differences. Next, we verify that the sample point estimate follows a normal model by checking certain conditions. Finally, we compute the estimate's standard error and apply our inferential framework. Let us go through each step one at a time. First, we begin with check of assumptions. Our first assumption is that the data came from two independent samples. This may be reasonable if we follow the random process and if we sampled less than 10% of the population. The second assumption is that the difference of the sample rates follows a normal model when each proportion separately follows a normal model. In our framework for hypothesis testing, the next step is to state the hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the difference of the two rates is null value, typically zero. The alternative hypothesis, if we are doing a two-sided test, is that the difference of the two rates are not the hypothesized va null value. If doing a one-sided test, the alternative hypothesis is that the difference of the two independent rate is higher than the null value, or that it is less than the null value. The third step in our framework for hypothesis testing is to calculate the statistic. The statistic z is calculated from the point estimate minus the null value divided by the standard error. In this case, the point estimate is the difference of the two sample rates. The standard error is calculated as the sum of the standard error of each rate. Note that in this equation, P1 and P2 are hypothesized population values, and P1 with a hat on top, or P2 with a hat on top, are sample estimates. Consider the special situation where we want to test if the two population rates are equal. In this situation, the calculation of the test statistic is easier. We replace the null value with zero, and the standard error is calculated from the average of the two sample rates. Keep in mind that the distribution of test statistic is always examined as though the null hypothesis is true. In this case, that the two population rates are the same. Next step in our inference framework is to look up the p-value. As the before, we look up the p-value associated with the standard distribution of z. Keep in mind that these tables provide one-sided test and the p-value for two-sided test is double the p-value for one-sided test. Last step in our framework is to infer from the sample if the difference in the two population rates has the hypothesized null value. We reject the null hypothesis if the p-value is smaller than the significance value. Let us look at an example. In this example, we want to know if the order of asking the question mattered. The respondents were randomly asked about features of the new health insurance law. For each randomly sampled respondent, the order of asking was randomized also. The table shows the results of this experiment. The question was whether, with 95% confidence, we can conclude that the order of asking the question did not matter. First, we checked our assumptions. Our first assumption was that the two samples were independent. 
Since respondents were randomly chosen and the order of asking the questions was also random, then the assumption of independence of samples may be reasonable. The second set of assumptions is that the difference of the rates is no was normally distributed. This was verified by checking that each rate was normally distributed. The sample size is large and the success failure condition holds for each sample. Therefore, we conclude that the assumption of near normal distribution of each sample is met and the difference of the two rate is also n near normal. Next, we state the hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that there are no differences in the rates, or said in another way that the two rates are the same. The alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference. Notice that these hypotheses require a two-sided test. Next, we calculate the Z statistic. The null value is zero, as we are testing that there is no difference. The population rates are not known, so they are estimated from sample rates. The point estimate is the numerator, and the standard error is the denominator. The z-value is calculated to be 5.18. We now look up the p-value associated with the z of 5.18. This z-score is not in the table, and gives us a p-value for the right tail of nearly zero. The two-sided test doubles this, but it's still very negligible. This p-value of approximately zero is smaller than the significance value of 0 0.05. So, we reject the null hypothesis. The order of asking the question did make a difference in the responses. Let us try to redo the above example, but this time through calculating a 95% confidence interval. We start with calculating the standard error. Recall that we had done this when we calculated the denominator of the z-value. The standard error for the difference of the rates is calculated at 0 0.025. Confidence interval is calculated as the point estimate plus or minus 1.96 times standard error. 1.96 is z-value for where approximately 95% of the data lie. In this case, the point estimate is the difference of the two rates, and the standard error is 0 0.025. The upper and lower confidence intervals were calculated. Note that the confidence interval does not include zero and therefore using the 95% confidence interval, the hypothesis of no difference in the subject's approval rates is rejected. In this lecture, we have used our inference framework to see how to compare rates from two independent samples.